I believe I have a message this morning that God would have us to bring. Hebrews chapter 12. I want to preach for just a moment. Try not to be no longer than the Lord would have me. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. <clears throat> I want to talk about serving God acceptably. I mentioned last Sunday that a lot of people feel like God will take just whatever He gives them. God won't take just whatever you give Him. Amen? He's a holy God. He has a way, and that way is through Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And there is no other way. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what somebody's told you. What matters is this book. And Christ is the only way. Serving God acceptably. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Looking diligently. Go to mark that word. Looking diligently. Least any man fail of the grace of God. Brother Doug, is that in there? Well, I just read it. Did you hear it? Looking diligent, least any man fail of the grace of God. Least any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Skip down with me to verse 28. Wherefore we receive in a kingdom. I mentioned this a few Sundays ago in the message about we receive a kingdom. Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have, listen, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably. I told you God wouldn't take just anything. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Flip over with me to the book of Galatians. Keep your place here in Hebrews. But flip over with me to the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. 2 and 20. Why, Brother Doug, do you always mention about Christ and Him crucified? Because that is the way. It's all through His Word. Galatians 2 and 20. Paul speaking, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. How did he say he lived that life? How did Paul go through shipwrecks and beatings and all the things that he went through and still served God by the faith of the Son of God? In other words, by faith in Christ and His cross, who loved me and gave Himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Father, I pray, Lord, that you touch this morning your word. Let your word go forth. Let it, let it be received, God. Let it go forth and accomplish and bring to pass the things that you send it forth to do. Use me, God, to speak forth just those things that are needed, nothing more, nothing less. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. He said these words, looking diligently. When he said this about looking about our soul, looking least we fail of the grace of God, it is us keeping our eyes upon Christ and the cross. Hear me this morning. It's not by me pulling myself up by my bootstraps or trying to get my willpower because I don't have a whole lot of willpower. If you don't believe me, you should have seen me chomp on a piece of two candy yesterday. I don't have a whole lot of willpower myself, but I serve Christ Jesus. Amen. And when I look to Him and I depend upon Him, He leads me and guides me and He directs me so that I might live the life that He would have me to live. And He tells us to look diligently, to trust in Him, to keep our focus upon Christ. You see, that's the whole thing is where is our focus at? We're too, too easily to get our eyes off of Christ and to get our eyes on the things of this world if we could keep our focus upon Christ Jesus looking diligently. When I thought about these things, I thought, what would a man give in exchange? Christ asked the question one time. He asked the question, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? For what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world, everything in this world, if it was His, if He gained everything and all of it, what profit would it be to lose His soul? 
Would He give that in exchange? No, sir. So we need to look diligently unto Christ. We need to realize that He is our everything, that He, that salvation in Him and life in Him is what it is all about. In Galatians chapter 5, you can turn there or not this morning. I'm going to read it to you. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 4. He says these words. Christ is become of no effect unto you, Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Now you got to be in something before you can fall from something, hadn't you? I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to tell you what the Word of God says. You can take it however you want to take, but if you're in it, you can't fall out of something unless you're in it. That's the reason I don't get in some things. I'm not going to fall out of them. Amen? So he says... Christ is becoming no effect. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are falling from grace. If you are trusting in yourself, if you're trusting in things, if you're trusting in your righteousness, you know what your righteousness is? is filthy rags. If you trust, well, I do this and I do that and I do the other, and you know, I go to church, I, I read the Bible, I pray, I, 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 you know the problem with that? I. My faith is in nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. So I am made righteous by faith in Christ. He goes on verse 5. For we through the Spirit, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. How can we be righteous? How can we meet the righteousness of God? Pastor David, there's only one way, and that is by faith in Christ Jesus. And when we place our faith in what Christ done upon the cross, we can come right, Brother Josh, we can come right into the very presence of God. We can come right into the throne room of God, right into the holies of holies, and there make our petitions known unto our God. He is the hope of of righteousness. Though devil might say, you know, look just how bad you are, how awful you are, look where you've been, but I can sing the song, what sins are you talking about? I don't, re- glory be to God, I don't remember them anymore. They've been washed, they've been cleansed. I have hope in His righteousness. Skip down to verse 7. I'll try to hurry this morning. Ye did run well. Now, in order to have run well, you had to have ran, didn't you? I'm just speaking plain. I'm not getting into any kind of doctrine this morning. I'm not going to fight with you over doctrine. You can believe it however you want. He said you did run well. That means you was in the race, don't it? Come on. That means you was in the race. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey God? The truth. You're running the race, you're doing good, but what stopped you? What hindered you? What delayed you? What held you up? That you should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. In other words, it didn't come. Christ didn't hinder you. Christ didn't slow you up. What hindered you? Listen, verse 9. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Who... Listen to me. This is not pleasant, but we need it. Who or what hindered you? What kept you from keeping your eyes upon Christ? What got your focus away from what it should be on? Who or what hindered your faith in Christ? You see, just a little leaven. Well, it's just a little thing, Brother Doug. It won't matter. It'll grow. You know what leaven does? It leavens it all. You put that leaven in the bread, you set it aside, and it's just a little old pile of our bread. You think, boy, that ain't going to feed nobody. Now, I know most of y'all don't bake bread like this, but I know a little bit about it. I don't either, but I've, I've seen it come to pass. I've seen it happen. You put that leaven in there and, and that little bowl, and it's just a little lump. And when they get ready to get it, it's swelled. That's what sin does. Sin will destroy. Sin will kill. Sin is a cancer. Would you take just a little cancer? No, sir. 
And somebody had a needle of cancer and said, I, I'm going to give you ju- it's just a little bit. I'm going to give you just a little bit of cancer and then I'm going to give you a million dollars. Would you say, shoot me up? You'd say, keep it far away from me. But we, what about sin? Well, it's just a small thing. Nobody will ever know. You'll know. God will know. And it will leaven the whole lump. It will bring destruction. we got to keep our focus upon Jesus Christ. You see, sin will destroy. Not only will sin destroy, but you know what it will do? It will bring bitterness. Do you realize bitterness will kill? Bitterness will tire down. When that root of bitterness springs up in your life, when you look at someone and you focus upon them and say, they have more than me, bitterness begins to set in. Or you look at the world. Come on. Come on now. Don't, don't leave me sitting now. If you, if you leave me sitting, it's going to be a whole lot longer. Stay with me. When you look at the world and you see something in, and this old flesh, and I'm going to talk about this in just a moment, you're still in the flesh. You still have the sin nature. I don't care how righteous, how holy, I don't care how much you shout, how much you dance all over the church, you still have the sin nature. Amen? It's there. So, if you allow that bitterness to come, it will spring up. It will spring up in your life and it will bring bitterness and it will tear down. I've seen people that served the Lord for many years and they had a bitterness about them and it was destroying their life. It was destroying their testimony. It was destroying everything about them. Well, he done me wrong. Well, what did he do? Have you ever seen these family feuds that go on for such a long time? And I don't, I don't mess with it because I told you how it is when you poke a bear last Sunday. But if you ask them what the problem is or what somebody done, most of the time they can't even tell you. But bitterness is set in. Watch out when that root of bitterness or or any root of sin begins to spring up in your life. If you're walking with Christ and you're walking in the Spirit as we're going to talk about here in verse 16, you'll know when that root shows up. You know, walking in the woods, one of the things, my legs is not all that great anymore and my knees are not that great anymore. And the thing that gets to me is roots. Roots will trip you up. Won't they, Brother Rand? Amen. They will trip you up. Man, you be walking along, leaves on the ground, and all at once there's that root, and before you know it, you're not walking anymore. You're on the ground. That's what will happen in your spiritual life. Those roots will begin to grow and they'll trip you up and they'll destroy your life. We are to be led, verse 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you have your eyes upon Christ Jesus and you are focused on Christ and His cross, that flesh, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Listen verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. I don't care how righteous. I don't care how old. I don't care whatever you might bring up. You're still in the flesh. And that flesh is going to lust against the Spirit. And the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that ye would. But, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law to follow the Spirit. Verse 25, if we live in the Spirit... Let us also walk in the Spirit. We are to be led of Christ Jesus. His Holy Spirit that dwells within the child of God now. Many times we try to tune that Spirit out when we need to be tuning it in. We need to be listening. We want to go in this direction and the Spirit says no and we tune Him out and we walk anyway. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be problems. There's going to be heartaches. There's going to be situations. Walk in the Spirit. Follow the Spirit of God and be led of Him. Be flipping over with me to the book of Romans chapter 6. We won't look back right at the moment in, in, in Hebrews. We will here in just a moment, but right now. But I, right after where I read to you in verse 15, he talks about a man that we all have learned about since we were little. His name was Esau. 
His name was Esau. The Word of God tells us in these verses in Hebrews that I have not read, you can read them later, that he was a profound person, profane person, profane person. You want to know why he was a profane person? Because he wanted to do it his way. Come on. Now you might like that song. You might scream it out, you know, when you sing it. I did it my way. Well, about every time I've ever sung that song, I look back and I see my way was the wrong way. And if I'd done it God's way the first time, Brother Larry, it would have been done right and wouldn't have to have been done over. Come on. We must walk in His way. Esau wanted it His way. He just thought I can do any way, act any way, be any way. I'm born to Jacob. Everything's fine. I'm in the lineage and I can just do whatever I want to do and be any way that I want to be. You can't do that. Cain was the same way. Cain thought that God would take any sacrifice that he brought, but God refused it because it was not through the blood. And it's got to be by the blood. Without the shedding of blood, Pastor David, there is no remissions of sin. It must be through Christ Jesus. So Esau tried to buy his birthright back, and he could not buy it back. You can't buy this peace. Glory be to God. You can't buy this peace and this joy that I have in my heart. You can't make it possible on your own. You can't work it. You can't accomplish it. You can't bring it to pass without going Going through the cross of Calvary. Romans chapter 6. You've heard these verses many times. This is a powerful, powerful chapter. Romans chapter 6 and verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Did you hear that? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it and the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Now I'm going to show my age here this morning. I know most young people's never heard of this. Never heard of this actor but he, or comedian. But he used to say the devil made me do it. Anybody remember his name? That's him. He'd say the devil made me do it. The devil don't make you do anything. The devil has no power over you. Especially if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He has no... You yield your members. You didn't just wake up and find yourself there. Come on, oh, it's got quiet now, ain't it? You didn't just come to yourself and you're right in the midst of that sin. Come on. You yielded yourself unto unrighteousness. So it says, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Now here's a thought. I like that. Here's a thought. Listen to this. But yield yourselves unto God. Why don't we yield ourselves to God? Why does God, and I'm talking to me. I might not be talking to you. Maybe this is just for me. But why does God have to hammer it in my hard head Come on. To go in the direction that He's showing me. Why does He have to do like I spoke last Sunday and pick me up and set me down and say, I said, be still. Why? Because I don't yield myself. Because I'm not following nor listening. Neither yield yourselves as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now listen. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Well, now, now I, I'm not going to argue with you. But I've heard people say, well, I've got to sin a little bit every day. Well, you've got that attitude, you're going to sin a little bit every day. I mean, what do you do? Walk around and say, well, here's my sin for the day. Oh, it's getting quiet. Boy, the TVs will go off this week. The radios will cut off this week. All the YouTubes will cut off this week. I mean, sin does not have dominion over you. Don't walk around like sin is your master. Sin is not your master. Even though we still have that sin, Jesus Christ 
Glory be to God is the Lord of my life. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. That means when you stumble and falter, you have grace, don't you? Glory. i got to go on. What then? Oh, this will get us some here now. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Do you realize that Jesus Christ that saved you through his cross and by his precious blood, that same faith in Christ, will sanctify you. Uh Uh-oh, it's getting quiet again. How do I live right, Brother Doug? By faith in Christ and the cross. Well, that's how I get saved. Yes, it is. How do I live right? By faith in Christ and His cross. By walking in faith day by day and moment. He didn't just save me, Brother Gary, and then set me in the world and say, now you go ahead and live right. No, He daily walks with me. He daily leads me. He daily directs me. And my faith and my focus is up on Christ. Listen, verse 17. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Listen, verse 18. This is shouting ground right here this morning. You ought to mark it in your Bibles. Being then made free from sin. Glory. How's that possible? By grace. Listen. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness, free from that sin nature. Those things that I would do, I no longer do because Christ dwells in my heart and dwells in my life. Those directions that I once went in, I no longer go in them because He leads me and He guides me. I'm drinking from a new fountain. Glory be to God. I don't drink from the old bottle anymore. I'm drinking that new wine. Glory. Hallelujah. That only Christ Jesus and His love and His mercy and and His grace can bring. You see, to the believer of God, I want you to hear this, verse 18, this is what he's saying. Verse 18, this is what he's saying, that there is a constant pull. There is a constant pull of the believer toward righteousness. You don't have to stop. I, I'm, I'm coming to a close. You don't, you don't have to stop and pick up the phone and call Brother Doug and say, Brother Doug, you know, I'm thinking about going here. Should I go there? You don't have to do that. Come on. You you don't have to stand there in front of that magazine and call me up and say, Brother Doug, this certain magazine. Now, Brother Doug, you ought to leave some things alone. No, I ain't. Mm -mm. Should I buy it or not? You don't have to call me up. This thing I'm watching on the TV or on the tablet. Should I... You don't have to call me. That Spirit's done told you. Now whether you listen to the Spirit or not, it's not up to me. And it's not up to God. He's not going to make you. But He's going to talk to you. That is that constant pull. You know what that pull means? Glory, I feel the Spirit. That means He loves you enough. That's, that, that is such pure, wonderful, gracious love. That's not Him trying to stop any fun that you've got going on or anything that you want to do or Him trying to rule in your life. He's trying to give you the greatest joy that there ever was. And He loves you enough to speak to your heart. That constant pull of righteousness to the believer of God. Now back in Hebrews, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try to draw a close. We're going to go one more place in Corinthians. But back in Hebrews ch- verse, chapter 12 and verse 28, 
He said these words, Therefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We are to serve God acceptably with reverence and with godly fear. Can I tell you something? And you can be turning to 1 Corinthians. We're going to close. Can I tell you something in this country? In this last day, we have lost. We have lost godly fear. People stand and mock God. People stand and openly blaspheme God and get paid for it. They call them entertainers. God help us. You see, we should have a godly fear. Not that I'm afraid He's going to push me aside or push me down or reject me because of what's in my life, but fear Him, a godly reverence because He is God. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He loves me so much that He was willing to go to the cross and give Himself for me. We need to serve Him with that godly reverence and that godly fear. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For no other foundation can man lay than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, listen. If any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones. Notice those things can't be burnt, can they? Those things I just mentioned will go through the fire. But if he builds wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Listen to verse 16, and I close. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Brother Curtis sings a song. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Church, who are you standing on? Who are you serving? Who are you looking to? Who are you trusting in? There is no other foundation. There is no one else upon who you can trust or depend upon in this last day than Christ and Him crucified. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. Your word is true, it is yea, it is everlasting. I thank you for what your word spoke to my heart this morning. Help us to serve you, God, as we never have before. Help this church, Lord, to become the church that you've called it to be. I pray, Lord, if there's one that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that does not know what serving God is all about, then, Lord, let them know the joy and the peace and the comfort this morning. Call them unto you, Lord. I pray, God, that you raise this church up in this last day that we might be a witness and that we might be alive.